Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna be doing something a little bit fun, and that's recreating the Stranger Things intro. Now, this one is not gonna be about the animation. What this video is gonna be about is just recreating the exact look, and I think that with just a little bit of uh, a couple little effects here and there, I actually got it pretty close to what the real thing looks like. You'll notice there are some differences. This is the closest font I could find that you can just, you know, download for free. Um, I'm sure they created their own font when they created this, and it's probably not available. It might be available, um, but I just use the easiest font to get that looks very, very similar. Um, now, another disclaimer is we are using a plugin for this, but it is a completely and totally free plugin. Uh, you go to videocopilot.net, and it is the Saber plugin. So just look up Saber videocopilot.net, download it, click that install button. It's really simple, really easy to install, and it it's so cool. It's so fun to use and it's free. Like I said, there's no like pay to get extra stuff or anything like that. It's just Andrew Kramer is awesome and he offers free things. So now we got those things out of the way. Let's get into actually creating this. So you'll see that what this is right here are three different elements. Um, we have the top line, or I guess you could say four. We have the top line, the two side lines, and then the stranger things in the center here. So let's go into a new composition and start building this. So this is going to be a little bit more of a fast-paced tutorial, sort of just showing you how to, you know, do this overarchingly, I guess you could say. Um, it's kind of going to be an intermediate, so I'm going to be just brushing over a couple things, thinking that you know, you know, how to do it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a new layer. We're going to go into solid, make it a black solid. Now we have a black solid that goes over the background, and then so then we're going to just going to create one more um, solid. We will just name this one down here, background, and then we are going to go into this next one. Okay, let's jump out of this. Go into this next one, and then this is where we're going to apply the Saber effect. So we're going to go into Effects and Presets, and we're going to search Saber. Click Saber and drag it onto here, and you'll see we have a straight line. And so what we need to do now is we need to grab a text element, just drag it across, and type in Stranger Things. And you'll notice what I'm doing right here is I have the pixel down to 0.3 and then I just have it have no fill because what we want the effect to be is just the saber. So go ahead and write it down and then just click this button so that you no fill it and then go ahead and make it a really small stroke. Then we go back into our solid and we go over here into customize core, saber, and then text layer. Then we choose the text layer whoops, right down here, right beneath this, we choose the text layer, Stranger Things. And now our saber has been applied to the Stranger Things. Before we get started, we should actually make sure that we are in the right font. Um, I'm using Binguat. Uh, it looks like a French word, but this is the one I'm using. You can also download this, one, download this one for free. Just search it online, download it, click install, restart After Effects, and it will be ready to go. Click on this one. This is going to be the main thing of what it looks like. So now we have the font set. Now let's get into actually adjusting that glow so it isn't just, you know, this bright sun in the, the sky. First thing we need to do is we need to set this color. So actually, let's go check. Let's make it exact. What was that last color that I used here? So I went into here, and what I used was this color right here, F9170C. I'm gonna go ahead and control C. If you think this is too bright or you want a different color, you can always change that. You can make this a green Stranger Things or whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna copy this color so that we are consistent. So go back into here, go into the color, and I'm gonna control V that right onto here, and now we have it set. And then now we need to really lower this intensity down. I'm gonna put it at 6%. Already things are looking a whole lot better. Um, and then what we also need to do, as I forgot here, is this needs to be all in all caps, which just makes it look 100 times better immediately. And there we go. Let's see. So make sure that's on a new line. Expand that out a little bit. Okay. So now we have Stranger Things out here, and it still doesn't look just right. We're going to go back in, and we're going to just start adjusting these a little bit. We're gonna bring down the spread just a little bit um, because if you notice, when we jump back and we actually bring the Stranger Things back up, where did it go, right here, um, you'll notice that it doesn't bleed very much at all into the background. It 
glows, but it only glows just a little bit around the edges. So we don't want a lot of that glow. So we're going to bring that spread down a little bit. We're also going to bring the bias down just a touch. And then the core size, we're going to bring that down to about a 170. Yeah, right around there. If you want the more Stranger Things look, it's probably just a little bit lower than that, but I'm going to go with 1.7. Uh, I think it looks really, really cool. So now that we have the glow sort of um, where we want it, now we can kind of add that little bit of effect, which you'll see right here is how part of it glows a little bit stronger than other parts. So to accomplish that effect, what we're actually going to go here is to the start size, so where it starts and then where it ends, and we're going to just move those just a little bit. So I'm going to make the start size, we're going to maybe cut that in half, 43 maybe. And you can already see there's slightly brighter areas and slightly darker areas now. And then we're just going to make sure that it's not such a strong hindrance or a, a, you know, a strong contrast right here. And we're going to bring this to, let's go 89%. 90, 90 is fine. And now we're starting to get that, you know, the different parts of it are different brightnesses sort of thing going. The next step is we're just going to go into, let's see, halo size. I'm going to make that uh, 150, give it a little bit more internal halo, 140. We'll just type 150 here. And then core softness, we're going to bring the core softness up a little bit as well to 1.5. And that really takes that, that harsh sheen off of it. So instead of having, you know, the really, really strong stuff, um, you get that really, really rounded. This core softness is really, really important. So look, watch zero. You can see it's it's really, really sharp, really sheen sharp sort of stuff here. And then now if we just do that, you know, right up to 1.5, it looks a whole lot better. So now we're starting to, now you can see it's really coming together here. So let's drag this to the center of the screen. Right there. And then we can start really getting into adjusting this text. Because if you'll notice... Here, it's very subtle, but the S is bigger than the R, and then the things is kind of tucked up underneath them, uh, those two as well. So we need to accomplish that. So let's go into here, highlight this whole thing, and if you'll notice, um, it's already started from the last one. We'll bring these back to 100%. This is what it's going to start as when you type things in. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch this out. So we're going to go 177% here, and then we're going to go 128% right here. And I just think that these dimensions make it look pretty close. Um, you know, really, really up to your eye. I just like the way these look. And we're also going to close these into about 169 right there. The size I like is 116, and then we're going to go to each one of these. I'm going to go 142, and then 142. Whoops. The numbers look really, really neat in this too. Um, but back to a capital S. Highlight that again. And then we're going to go 142. So now we have that really the strong S and R that really makes this logo this logo. But what we need to make... Um, what really needs to sell this effect, though, is we have to bring this up to the top. So instead of having it adjust like it normally does, where when the letters get larger, this goes down, we need to take this trange part and bring it up. And luckily, it's really, really easy in After Effects. Highlight right here, and then we are going to click the Set Baseline Shift, and we are going to drag that shift right up here and put it in line with the other one. And now you have that stranger at the pop top with trange right here in line with the rest of it and things on the bottom. So if you can see right here, it is looking pretty good. Everything is looking basically the same dimensions as the other one. Um, we can actually just, if you notice, it's a little bit, we can bring that in just a tad bit. Yeah, yeah I think that's looking good. Let's see. We're actually going to try to bring these letters in a little bit closer together. So, because it's really, really supposed to be squished. So let's bring that in a little bit and then we'll stretch it back out. Just so the letters are closer together. And yeah, now we're having sort of that, that where they're hitting each other. And they were just really, really condensed inward. I like that a lot. So yeah, I just dragged this down to negative 50. Sort of squishes the letters into one another. And then we get that sort of effect that they got. 
The next step now, so now that we have the stranger part, it's time to add a little bit the bars on it. And that's actually really, really simple with this saber effect as well. So what we need to do is we need to take this, um, switch toggle and switches, and make this go into screen. It's not going to do anything, but when we add things, it helps um, make sure that this isn't the overarching. Because when you add a saber effect, it adds a black background. Putting screen removes the black background. So we are just going to go... Um, Actually, we're just going to duplicate this. So we're going to hit Control-D. And you'll see it got brighter because it just created another one. We're going to take a rounded rectangle or an actual. Let's go with an actual rectangle. And we're going to click and just drag a little rectangle on the top here. It's supposed to be pretty thin. And we'll, we'll make sure that that's uh, exact in a little while. So now, the only thing we need to change on this new duplicated layer um, we can go ahead and, whoops, not select children. We can go ahead and rename this to top bar. So what we need to do here is we need to go, instead of text layer, go into layer masks. And that's the only switch we need to do. So instead of it choosing a text layer, it goes into the layer mask, that mask that we just created. So now it highlights that mask. And already, um, since we just duplicated from the other one, it takes all of the settings from this one and just applies it. And that actually looks really, really good already. Um, I can adjust this side because I think it's supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be in line. Actually, yeah, yeah, it needs to go out a little bit more. So we can just really quickly edit that. Click on the mask. Hold Alt so you can zoom in where you're aiming. Then we'll go into the, let's see, selection tool. We'll just click this and click the line in between. Hold Shift so it doesn't go up or down. And just drag it out a little bit. Come back out. A little bit too far, but that's okay. We can just shift it to the right some because it needs some on the right as well. And, oops, okay. Uh, yeah, it, I, ended, I didn't actually, I, I clicked and dragged the whole mask here. What I wanted to do was just grab this edge. So now, that, now we're doing that. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then a couple back, and there we go. Now it's um, in line with that side and in line with this side. Maybe a couple touches back that way. Yeah, pretty good. You can you know adjust that so it's perfect down the line, add some guides or something. But right now, I think that looks great for what we're trying to accomplish. So then the next part is to just create two little ones down here. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to grab top bar, hit Control D, um, then... D. Okay. Then we're going to take this one and we're going to see if the zoom in so we can grab the actual thing. So we're actually going to open this up, open masks, click on mask, and then drag the whole mask down here. And where it's supposed to be is, let's see, it's supposed to be right at that T there. Um, so the bottom of it's supposed to be lined up with the T. So we need to, I'm holding shift here so that it's in line with that top one. And we're going to bring it right to here. And then now we're going to zoom in over to here. Click on the line in between the two points and hold down shift to bring it all the way back here and get it really close. Zoom this back in and zoom this out. And yeah, that looks really good. here put that here yeah looking really really good here okay so the next part is to just duplicate this control D once more and then hold shift and right arrow easiest way I like or you can hold shift and drag it and just line it up so it's at the right point on the, uh, the S over here oops I accidentally hit down while I was going there I just need to make sure that these are lined up. Which is going to take a couple clicks right here. And there we go. So just like that, we have recreated the Stranger Things intro. Actually, pretty simply, what, in about 14 minutes? Um, yeah, we've recreated it. Now you can really do anything you want with this. Uh, you can... The reason I'm not doing animation in this video is just because it takes a long time. So if you notice at the very end of this right here, um, to get this, what it's doing is it's bringing all the letters in individually. And really the only way to do that in After Effects is to do each and every letter individually. It's to start it right here, 
break out every single letter and then kind of go backwards in time and drag them all over places so they all come together. I'll show that in a later video, but it's a lot of work, so I think it needs its own video. Thanks everyone for joining me on how to recreate the Stranger Things uh, starting sequence. Not exactly the animation part, but how to recreate you know, the, the, the iconic image. If you got any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments and you know section below, and I'll try to get back to them as quickly as possible. Subscribe for more Adobe-related content, and until next time, guys, see ya.